everyone welcome to science in a cup today we are going to learn about and also experiment see experiments about photolithography now photolithography comes from two word photo and lithography lithography is a greek word where lithos and graphene means stones and graphene means to write or to draw so earlier what happened you in lithography was that they used to take a flat stone and from in the flat stone they used to apply oil or uh, uh, oil to draw pictures or draw text and then they used to apply acid there so the parts where oil actually uh, oil was deposited the acid would not etch away that part and remaining part it would actually etch away or make it more hydrophobic and then after this process was complete then a uh, black ink or any type of ink was applied such that you can transfer the image which was drawn on the stone to a paper now there are various lithographic techniques like uh, iron beam x-ray lithography, iron beam lithography, electron beam lithography that are used to make minute patterns or structures on a substrate. Now where do we need this pattern or structures? Silicon industry like our phone or our processors has many chips or IC integrated circuit. These circuits are actually made using UV lithography or various iron beam lithography, uh, electron beam lithography and there are tons and tons of lithographic techniques on where these patterns, these transistors, MOSFETs and other structures are actually made. So today we are going to concentrate on this photolithography and let us see what is a photolithography, how you can do photolithography in a lab and various other uh, tips and bits. So over to you Shubhajit. So, uh, like we are doing photolithography, we will be doing, but for that we will be needing the substrate. So, what is photolithography? So, briefly, I am saying it is the imprintation. So, I will imprint something on a glass substrate. For that, we need to clean a glass substrate. Like so, in integrated circuit manufacturing, photolithography or optical lithography is a general term techniques in which light is used to produce minute pattern in the thin film or on the substrate, like silicon, glass, etc. Now, because of this lithography, we can protect certain areas and rest of the areas can be either edge depositor or iron can be implanted on it. Now, typically ultraviolet light is used. In our lab, we use 365 nanometer uh, to uh, transfer any geometric patterns or design. But we need to take the help of an optical mask or a photolithography mask. Now we use a chemical which is actually light sensitive. This chemical is called photoresist. Glass substrate like this you would see because uh, from camera it can't be seen. To clean this glass substrate, firstly we will like uh, we'll use ethanol and DI water to ultrasonic it. So it's actually remove the impurities present uh, organic or in inorganic on the glass surface. Uh, on the glass sur 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 surface. So so it is necessary because otherwise the, your implantation won't be uh, good. So primary thing is this, now we will go to photolithography lab so to see how the structures uh, come. So let's go. This is the lithography loom. It is a positive air pressure. Positive air pressure meaning like when you open the door, the air will come out of the room. So there is the Shubhajit working and we will be discussing with him about the photolith uh, photolithography. So the inside temperature is 19. For, for photolithography, what type of room and environment is needed for you? Yes, I mean, generally like uh, we are uh, pre imprinting something on a glass substrate. Okay. So the ambient of glass substrate and the vicinity of glasses should be clean, matter clean. So that uh, our coating material, which is going to be a photoresist, we don't, uh, I mean, don't touch in, uh, with any type of... Uh, so there shouldn't be any dust particles on top of yeah, this? any type of contamination is unwanted. Okay. So, like, that is why in photolithography what happens, I mean, uh, like a clean room is used. I don't know the what is the level of this clean room because there is a level. So I don't know, but you can see, I mean, uh, like, uh, nets and the other two uh, port of nets, so you can see. So it is actually to uh, I mean to clean this to make the room uh, dust free. And what about the light? Why it is a yellow light? So yellow light because photoresist our photoresist our photoresist is a photosensitive material. Huh. It only reacts with the uh, uh, reacts with light 
in a raging ultra pilot so yellow actually does not react with photo rays so that is why it is kept i mean the only the photo i mean only the yellow light is switched on is it you are doing i am just covering the place because so that the photo rays is because photo rays will be coming out what is this thing this is a spin coater digital spin coater okay so we can manage we can set the angular speed speed coating type as so, per our choice as per our convenience and uh, it has to be optimized though but we can choose as per our convenience what will be the speed coating type and what will be the uh, your angular speed so it uh, basically defines the thickness of the film or thickness the uh, thickness of the film uh, okay. photo resist because if you increase the speed coating type mm -hmm. the coating will be and the layer thickness will be less because the most of your batteries will be uh, spread off out of that substrate uh, surface so what is the substrate you are using um, the glass light glass light glass light okay glass light solar lamp glass light not porcelain solar lamp glass light and uh, is quartz substrate used no no quartz is costly so no need to use for that i mean this is a clean glass substrate okay so so this is the glass substrate okay clean glass substrate Processes in which a thin film can be coated to a glass substrate or any substrate like silicon, uh, quartz, etc. So uh, that are the process like deep coating in which uh, a substrate is slowly dipped into a solution and then again taken out slowly in a controlled environment without vibration or without much change in the room temperature uh, and in presence of maybe inert gas with or without. Also, uh, another is spin coating. In spin coating, uh, a substrate is spinned, uh, a, a substrate on which there is this uh, chemical or any chemical or any photoresist which is spinned at a high RPM such that a uh, uniform thin layer forms. So, the uh, layer which forms on the substrate needs to be very uniform. In industry, mainly spin coating is used. There are also other techniques in which thin film can be formed, like sputtering, thermal evaporation, chemical deposition. So coating techniques is uh, are different. So we are using this uh, spin coated to coat. There are other methods to uh, coat. Thin films. Uh, thin films. Okay. So we will uh, use uh, uh, we will use photo resist. Over that we will drop one or two uh, photo resist to drop, and uh, and we will coat for a while. So in my case, I will coat it for one minute. Okay. So let's see what happens. Okay. And what is this sound? Is it the vacuum pump? Yes, it is a vacuum suction pump. Actually, to hold the substrate inside a spin coater, so a vacuum uh, needs to be operated. Uh, a vacuum is there to hold the substrate. Okay, okay. So humming noise which you are using is from the vacuum. This vacuum is used to hold the substrate firmly to the jug. The jug is uh, used in the spin coater, also uh, in the machine. To which where it is exposed to the UV. Now what happens in a spin coater is that in spin coater the substrate is actually uh, rotated at a high RPM so like 1000 RPM or sometimes 5000 RPM so at high RPM because of the centrifugal force the substrate may fly away. To hold it in its place vacuum suction is used and also in the lithographic machine, the photolithography machine where the substrate is exposed to the UV light, vacuum is used such that because of the small vibration, the substrate and the photo mask doesn't get displaced. If it gets displaced, then the pattern which will form on the substrate will not be uh, useful. So Shubhajit is doing initial one more time with the blower just for a precautionary purpose and then he is going to put it in the spin coater to coat it with the photo resist and that's it so now i am putting on this chuck so this chuck mainly you can see the two circular rings these are mainly to hold the substrate so i am uh, switching on the vacuum so vacuum is applied to hold the substrate otherwise because when we are uh, applying a angular speed on this chuck so it may spread out so to hold it it should be something uh, like in our case it is vacuum okay. on this track and uh, so it will hold uh, very well so okay. now I am uh, uh, like you can see that it is not moving that is it is uh, it is being held with vacuum with yes. vacuum
So what is this? Uh, this is our uh, photosynthetic material. Photo resist. We are calling this uh, photo resist. Uh, what is the company? Is it? Actually, its commercial name is ADS 4562. Is it? 4562. 4562. It's a commercial name. Okay. So, when actually light goes, especially uh, if you like, these actually become indent carboxylic acid. And uh, for developing, so we will uh, we'll come to the development later. Yes, so it is a positive or a negative photoresist? So, yes, so it's a positive photoresist. And we have to also make sure that bubble doesn't form. Uh, in summary soft baking is actually done so there are three purposes one is to uh, evaporate away the solvent in the photoresist second if we want to make multiple layers of photoresist then uh, each layer needs to be uh, baked before applying the next layer or there will be a structural deformity and third after soft baking the photoresist hardens and such that it will not stick to the photo mask to avoid any deformity in the final structure we need to place the substrate with the photoresist very close to the photo mask uh, so if it is not soft bake it may get attached to the photo mask and destroy the photo mask hence soft baking is done uh, here in the experiment at 100 degrees celsius which Shubhajit has shown so, we will directly put it into a hot oven. What is soft baking? We will so, put. Yeah, yeah. Soft baking actually is a heating. So, baking is a heating. So, why we are uh, like uh, we are doing uh, uh, heating? Is we are doing soft baking because. Uh, needs the solvent to evaporate. Yeah, needs the solvent. So, why we, we need it? So, because on that, we, uh, people may actually coat uh, double layer, triple layer. So, to, to get the higher thickness. Okay. For that, it has to be uh, get hardened. Okay. That is why you are uh, you are putting the salt. Correct. So at what temperature are you salt baking? Yes, uh, as you can see, it is already at 100 degree. Okay. So now it is 99. Okay. So uh, we are putting the uh, salt at 100 degree. For how much time are you going to salt bake it? Uh, around 10 minutes. Because it was optimized for 10 minutes. 10 if minutes. I use uh, uh, more than 10 minutes. The may burn. And what if it is less than 10 minutes? Less than 10 minutes because uh, even now you can see it is like uh, a little liquidy. Little liquidy. Uh, yeah, little liquidy. So we can see the solvent is actually burning. Okay. So because uh, you have to see you have to check what time because it was previously optimized for 10 minutes. Okay. And also it was seen and if it is more than 10 minutes, the protein is smelling to burn. Okay. What did you do? So, uh, I just means uh, shifting the vacuum uh, to this chart. Okay. So, uh, as I told you earlier, right, photolithography has uh, three major parts, like three major uh, process. One is spin coating, I already have been shown, I have been shown, I have shown you. 
and uh, the next thing is like exposing. So which is the which comes in the main part? Exposing the UV light because uh, our photoresistive is, is, is very reactive to uh, UV light, and we will expose in different types. And uh, you can see these are the exposing uh, these are the setup where we can expose. You can see one uh, lamp is there. You can see the traces of UV light. UV light. So uh, there we will uh, put our substrate. And as I said, we need to have a uh, photo mask. The photo mask is made out of quartz because quartz is actually transparent to the UV light. Hence, the UV light can fall onto the substrate containing the photoresist. The photo mask actually has patterns. So we want to copy that patterns onto a glass substrate or silicon substrate. Now, photolithography actually uses two types of uh, photoresist. One is positive photoresist and another is negative photoresist. So as I said, there is a pattern mask. Which is, which is applied onto the substrate which is coated to a photoresist. Now this pattern mask actually blocks the light. So only the unmasked region of the material will be exposed to light. A solvent called the developer is applied to the surface after it is exposed to light. In case of a positive photoresist what happens is that the photosensitive material which was exposed uh, continue, gets degraded by light. This developer actually washes away or dissolves away these regions that were exposed to the light leaving behind a coating where mask was placed. In case of a negative photoresist what happens the photosensitive material is strengthened either polymerized or cross-linked by light and the developer will dissolve away only the regions that were not exposed to light leaving behind a coating in areas where the mask was actually not present. Where are the, uh, where are the structures? On uh, your convenience, will be prepared. Uh, will be prepared previous. I mean, it is already made. And we, using that structure, you want to expose. So what will happen? That uh, it will. So I am showing in the uh, photo mask how it how it is uh, look how it is look like. So this is our uh, so this is our photo mask. So this is our photo mask. You can see the many structures have been imprinted previously. So it is already made. So uh, and now you can see that there is a it's a quartz substrate and the black region I don't know it is uh, seen or not. Yes, yes. Uh, is it visible? Okay. If it is visible, then you can understand that this is going to be the our structure we want to imprint on the glass substrate. As the photo is already have been coated, so uh, you can see this structure and uh, I will uh, I will put uh, this structure on over the substrate and uh, and. Uh, our whole arrangement will be ready to expose and uh, it is understandable that uh, this uh, opaque portion you can see this opaque portion uh, uh, will block the UV light on the substrate so here the light will not be uh, falling so and the, this transparent portion uh, you can see this part so light actually visible I mean, will, uh, will be transparent to this uh, core substrate and that uh, so, other than this uh, opaque portion, light will be exposed and after developing, it will be washed off and the photos will go and only this opaque portion, only where the opaque portion is there, so only that part, the uh, photos will be remaining. So, that is why we have imprint, how we imprint a structure from photomax to our photos, photos structure. So, what is the wavelength you are using? Uh, we are using 365 and you can, we do always know that it is, uh, I mean, uh, below the visible range. Okay. So, and it is, uh, we are using the high power. Okay, high power, high power 365. 365. Nanometer. And, uh, what we are seeing, it is the fluorescence of the that material, coming from that material. Okay. <laughs> You have switched on the vacuum. Yeah, okay. vacuum actually. Okay. So vacuum is applied uh, as well as in, the, in this 
child and all and all and the sweet coating also. So it is just nothing but the boulder substrate. Okay. You are adjusting the level. Yeah, yeah, I am just uh, making it perfect. Okay. Now it is ready for exposure. Okay. So this is a sensor. Okay. Anything actually uh, move, uh, anything moving inside this region. Mm -hmm. So the lamp will automatically switch off and will totally be exposed. Okay, I will hold this. So what is the exposure time? Yes, I already you can see. I already uh, set it for one minute. So we can uh, set it like. Uh, okay. You say eighty seconds. So let's expose it. So it is now eighty seconds. Eighty seconds. Eighty seconds. Okay. So let us expose it for eighty seconds. Because it is deep UV, yes. Yeah, it is, uh, it is known that the UV light actually is very hazardous to our eye and our body. Very harmful to the eyes. Yeah. Yes. And also, yeah. Uh, sure. And, and uh, let's wait for 80 seconds to finish. Okay. And, uh, and after that, mm -hmm. we will go directly to the developer. The developer is the basic solution. It is actually 20% uh, uh, caustic soda, I mean KOH, and 80% DIY. So it is actually mixed to be as it is already mixed, I mixed it. So it is a shaker, mechanical shaker, to the rinse of that photoresist, I mean the Indian carboxylic acid. Because it is an acid, it is an alkali solution. So it will react and uh, rinse of the portion where it was exposed. So you can see, you won't realize before developing the open means uh, where it was exposed okay. so after uh, developing we can see so uh, we will develop for some so for uh, how many seconds are you putting it in, in solution uh, that actually we have to see means optimize time, not it was optimized but for different exposing time and for different uh, sample time will be different but it is not should not take more than five minutes So you are rinsing with DI water? Yes, I am washing off with DI water. Uh, so uh, it was it was shaped on uh, within the uh, developer. Okay, it's just like you, uh, washing clothes. We wash clothes in detergent and uh, detergent, and after that we wash that with water. So here the detergent is the POA solution, basic solution, and we are using DI water to uh, remove that. Uh, the salt which uh, have been uh, formed in uh, the developer. We can see. So it is visible with the microscope, right? Yes, it is visible, but uh, we can this see. Is, we will see. I mean, I don't know. Or you can also observe that at the corner. Still, the photoresistor uh, not completely washed off. This is because at the surface, what happens? Yes, yes. Due yes, to we can due see to structures uh, in uh, camera. Yes. Okay, okay. You can see the structure now. Uh -huh. So uh, that has been replicated here. 
of the photo is uh, in of the photo mass structure. These are the structures mm -hmm. made. You can see sir, clearly. These are structure of photo mass, and these on the microscope you can see. These are the structure. Uh, what is the dimension? Dimension is different. I mean, you can see there are uh, many structures of different dimensions. What is the minimum dimension? Uh, minimum dimension uh, 80 micron. 80 micron. So it is more than 80 micron. micron. What I uh, it is now small scale. Okay. So like uh, how much structure? small structures can it be made with using this machine? Yes, uh, not uh, small than uh, 500 uh, nanometer. Why did you say 500 nanometer? 500 because its minimum feature of the positive photoresist is 0 0.5 micron. Okay. So due to diffraction, due to diffraction and photoresist itself, so it can't go beyond that. It can't go beyond that. So that is the, the restriction, limitation using the photo view photo to, uh, to make a structure as small as in nanometer, below 100 uh, nanometer, we have to I mean, uh, electron Thank you, Dr. Shubhajit Datta. So, I am not a doctor, so the path is very far, it seems like very far. So, do you have a girlfriend? <laughs> <laughs> he will laugh turn. Okay, so, Shubhajit is my friend Junia and also a lab mate. So if you uh, like the video and if you like Shubhajit, please like, share and subscribe to Science in Akka. Till then, bye bye. We'll see you in the next video. Thank you.